So Joshua, uh, we're gonna go out and do a little bit of a ride. What are you looking to do today? What do you wanna achieve? Just wanna explore a little bit, see how much bicycle infrastructure we can see. I wanna see if it really makes me feel like either I have some places I can say like, oh, this feels like home, or no, nah, there's a little bit more work that we could do in this Austin area. So that's a good point. So you just said, uh, so, we can, so I can sort of feel like home. What do you mean by feel like home? What like the home. context is? I feel like what I want to see is like, do I feel like I can get to where I need to go? And can I get there fast enough? And can I get there safe enough? Uh, I was just biking back there actually, and it felt like at one point the side of the poles like, just disappeared and I was like kind of back on a road that was winding with just like paint on the ground. And I was like, all right, this unfortunately does feel like home, but not the type of place of home where I would like want to ride. Yeah. Okay, so let's go out and take a look at some of the Dutch-inspired, protected and separated infrastructure, just like we have right here. So we're gonna go across and then we'll turn left. This is the HEB I used actually when I had to, uh, came here the first time. Okay. We're riding on some Dutch-inspired, protected and separated infrastructure here on the Miller uh, development. Used to be the old airport. Uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts? I think, like I said, the first time I came here, this is, what made, this is one of the things that made me want to come back to Austin, Texas. Yeah. I, I saw this, I was like, there's no way this is real. Like, it's so big and it's separated yeah. by concrete. Yeah, no, it's, it's pre pretty darn cool. And the, uh, and we just had, saw a runner, you know, running in the bike lane there, which is really, it's, it's pretty cool. It's fine. It's not a big deal. The reason why runners prefer to, to run in, in the, uh, the bike lanes is because it's, there's actually a lot less friction for them than, you know, on the sidewalk. Because when you look at the sidewalks, you see that there's lots of driveway cuts. And, uh, and in that case, there's lots of, you know, people walking their dogs too, so. Yeah, and it's not always it the biggest, out. sometimes really great uh, bicycle infrastructure is like multi-use anyways. Yeah, it's multi-use anyways. So yeah, I mean, this is, this is really, I think, one of our most bicycle and walking friendly communities because they were able to develop it from the ground up with a sense of how do we create a culture of activity? How, we, how do we create you know, a density where there's many people living in close proximity to grocery stores and coffee shops like we were just at? If we and, did like a time lapse actually, like going through this whole neighborhood, yeah. you would see how comfortable it makes you feel. Yes. If just even in a time lapse, it shows you like, wow, everybody is like very close. Like I can walk outside and I can feel like, all right, I can get somewhere else, you know? Yeah. Like I can get somewhere else. Yeah. It's nice to see the amount of people like out walking. Yeah. So let's, let's do this. Let's, um, let's take a look, uh, pause and just take a look at, at this. So we've been on a single unidirectional, um, you know, exactly. one, direction. one direction bike path, separated bike path. And then now we have a, um, a, a two-way cycle path here, and you'll, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a difference. What we're point, pointing towards now is the older section, and, uh, and, and you can see that it's got you know, the, the flex posts, and it's not the, the concrete and complete separated. So this actually was some of the earliest development in this particular community. And so the bike lane wasn't the, uh, at the same caliber as what we're in right now. And if we swing around with a camera and look this way, you'll see a, dra a dramatic difference. Oh yeah, whoa, all right, see? That's a good point. So yeah, so you see the old stuff and you see that this was kind of put in after the street was already done. And then we swing around and you see the, the new stuff. And we're going to continue down uh, the new stuff and uh, take a look at the new middle school where the kids uh, in this neighborhood, as well as the surrounding neighborhoods, go to school. So the school is this way? Yep. You know what, I have a feeling like I was, I was skating in a neighborhood the other day and I don't know if it was this one. It might have been, yeah. Because I remember coming out to a street 
and I solved like something just like this. This actually takes us right to the, the skate park. All right, so it must have been. All right, yeah. so yeah, there you go. All right, yeah. interesting. Yep, and you got a cyclist coming towards you here. That's crazy. It's like they're spoiled in this neighborhood. Yeah. And again, if you take a look at the, the housing stock here too, you see a good mixture of uh, more dense housing as well as single family homes. And so there's a good mix here. You see the, the lights right over there, over the pathway, which is super cool. And again, you, you know, plenty of families out using the space. And again, when you when you look at you were mentioning it earlier when you were on uh, you know the, the 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 bike lane with the flex post and then they went away. Yep. But then you take a look at this infrastructure and you see you know completely separated and protected with trees with curbs. It just makes all the difference in the world in terms of creating a safe space for people to ride. I was actually I think this is it. Yeah, this must have been it. I don't know. I don't know which street it was on, but I definitely, I definitely was here. I almost felt out of place at first. I was like, I was like, they're they're still doing construction. They are. Yeah. They're a little bit of construction left. Yeah. They're almost completely done. Like, how new is this neighborhood? Then, like, three years, four years? The three, four, or five? Yeah. So we're gonna actually take a left here um, on in the cycle path. Oh wow! All right. <laughs> and this. All right. This is the middle school. Oh, wow, I see. I did do a, a video on the, this middle school and the kids uh, riding to school on the first day. So when you say riding to school, like, was it like a bike bus or was it just people showing up or? It was a little bit of a both, yeah. A little bit of both, got it. Mostly it was just parents riding with their kids uh -huh. to school. Was it like almost like a grand opening kind of thing or yep. was that? It, oh, was the, it was the school's grand opening. Yeah. So they're very pro bicycle? Yep. Wow. Wow. See, like, <laughs> this is a much better line to have than having a whole line of cars. Correct. You'll, you'll notice that if I ever want to talk about the US, for example, mm -hmm. or if I want to talk about like my city, my state, this is the kind of thing I want to show someone, not like, not like some of the other things. Like, but like, this just is beautiful. Yeah. Like, it's just, it speaks for itself. Yeah. We'll pause right here for a second and I'll, I'll point a few things out to you. So the other thing that they did with this development is they created this natural surface trail as well. So you see the gal running on the natural surface here and then right behind you, um, you'll see the natural surface uh, continues that direction as well as it's going to continue in this direction. And the reason why they do a little bit of natural surface trail as well is runners prefer to be on a natural surface and many times people prefer to walk on a natural surface. Plus it's great for the environment too because the, the less paving we can do, uh, the better for, for water filtration and, and being able to replenish our aquifers. And so the crash, the, the crushed granite and aggregate, um, you know, natural surface is nice and allows that. Now we also have quite a few uh, developments, quite a bit of housing here um, where there's affordable housing. And so people who can't afford to pay market rate, there's plenty of opportunity throughout the neighborhood here. Um, and the great thing about this neighborhood is you can't tell the difference between the market rate and the affordable housing. So it's, it's very integrated into the entire development, which is a big part of it. Mm, I'd like to learn more about that for sure though. Yeah. That's a really interesting concept. They're thinking proactively about the way in which they can make this a very friendly feeling neighborhood, yeah. which means like having allocated space for allocated uses of transportation, for example, which I think is really interesting. And it's almost like in a way like this is becoming a very great example of what future neighborhoods should look like, if you, if you get what I mean. Exactly. I'm sure there's people could argue for different things, benefits and stuff, but from, you know, <laughs> yeah. from many other examples, I would say this is killing it on a lot of levels. Yeah. Especially because I didn't even notice like this small little, because yeah. I, I don't run, but yeah. like those of them that do, like this is really big for them. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I mean, it's just the, and, and this gets to, to the details too. Um, and, and for example, when we, we do look at this street over here, you can see you've got the, the, the natural surface trail there, you've got a few runners on there, and then you'll also notice this street uh, that, which has parking on both sides, but you'll also notice that there's no bike-specific infrastructure for that street. But it's still okay because it's such a calm and slow street that you know a, a person can ride a bike on the in the lane on that street, or they can go ahead and use the natural surface trail. They can ride on the natural surface trail if they don't feel comfortable being in the street itself riding a bike. So you have you know, you kind of have both. So let's uh, let's actually continue down this way because if we continue down this way, we, this is one of the major streets that comes into the neighborhood, and uh, and we'll get a look at uh, probably the street that you came in on, and we'll see you know the interaction uh, between that street and you know and the community here, and then we'll come back around and and check out some more of the the neighborhood. Yeah, for sure. All right, All let's right. do it. Is the park you mentioned down this way too? We can do a couple of different things in terms of heading back towards the uh, bike park. I saw it the other day uh, for the first time and uh, had to go back and try it out. It is such an important thing for there to be an integration of activity assets of all different types in communities, you know, including parks and skate parks and bike facilities and. Uh, and, and then just being able to, to create an environment that is comfortable for people. And details, like look at this, we've got a, a row of trees, they call this an allay of trees, you know, that you know, just makes it much more comfortable. And as these trees get more mature, this will provide amazing shade. Amazing shade, yep. yeah. hanger right here. immediately a lot more comfortable. <laughs> Way more comfortable. It's not even a second guess about it. Yeah. Yeah, we're back here at the middle school and as we're rolling by you can see that there's still some construction some areas that need to be worked on um, there's some of the bike racks right over there uh, yes. tucked away yep. and there's a few bike racks right in front but Actually, really let's go look at those bike racks real quick if you don't mind yeah I'm gonna just hop on up here. Right um, here. Let, let's actually go to the other ones that are in the Sun because ah, this is sun. this is in the dark here if we go around the corner, you can see some that are in the sun. Better for filming if you want to film it. Yeah, definitely. And you can also see some of the areas that are still being constructed as part of the campus. So we're gonna take a left here and head over and take a look at the big bank of bike parking spots. Swing around here, the uh, the athletic fields here. We can see that you know people are out using it, and so it's a good example of how school grounds can be used as activity assets and parks for the local community. And as long as they're completely open and free, like it's it's just great. Oh, 
wow. Wait, is this free? Yep. What? Yep, so this is part of the, uh, oh. the campus for the kids. <laughs> All right, this is, this is the thing. And you can see they're, they're working on some uh, ultimate Frisbee over there. And this is another great view too of, you know, some of the denser housing. Fantastic. And so, yeah, you can see some row houses that have been created here. A little bit denser housing. We'll jump on the cycle track again. I, th I think about this in like context of my family specifically, like, you know, we're a pretty big family. So I was like, would I have been able to get up and go down the street, for example, on my own? Probably, um, you know, when my parents feel comfortable, that's a different thing, right. but still like it's way more probable. Yeah. Would I have been able to make a friend in the neighborhood and then maybe be able to like visit them? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah because there's a lot of opportunities there. Yeah, it's, it's creating that opportunity for uh, more free range kids. You know, if you're living in this neighborhood here, you've got this protected bikeway and boom, you can head right on down to the park here. So let's go ahead and turn in. We can go check out the park. Yeah, I was there. But I feel like for example, like one thing my parents have had to get a little used to is, uh, you know, like when there's other recreational opportunities around, for example, like a park, but for us it wasn't a park, it was like a, let's see. For us, it wasn't, it wasn't a park, it was like a, a, like a local college that once again had yeah. opportunities just like that one. Right. We can kind of go and do whatever. So we rode our bikes over there. Um, they were fine with that, you know? Yeah. So I feel like it almost makes parents feel more comfortable that there was things around to do. You know, they, they can let their children go do something, for example. Like it was yeah. welcoming, if that makes sense, you know? Yes, absolutely. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. got outside. Yeah, exactly. This is so good. All right, hey everyone, that does it for part one of my ride with Joshua Funches on the Miller neighborhood. And if you enjoyed part one here, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. We're gonna come back with part two and venture off of the Miller neighborhood and make our way over to the Martin Luther King Jr. transit station. Uh, uh, so tune back in for that. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.